Hi, I'm Raj Kumar, President and Editor-in-Chief of DevX here at European Development Days in Brussels, and joined by Bernard Pacher, who is uh, someone who's here to talk about weather systems and a big opportunity in development that for some reason has not been realized. So I, I want to first understand what is this opportunity around weather systems? Well, actually, over here, everybody is talking now about the weather, which is, which is good mainly with the perspective of aiding smallholder farmers in getting better crops, getting some financial stability, mm -hmm. for which new systems for in insurance are being introduced, right. uh, mostly known on the weather index insurance, for which weather data is needed. Mm -hmm. And the problem there is that data just isn't there, because if you want to insure against precipitation, you need to know local precipitation data. So what we are trying to solve is the problem, where could that data come from? How can it be collected in real time? How can it be then transferred to the index insurance companies, but also to farmers, so that farmers benefit from that same information. And at the moment now, insurance companies are willing to write policies, but simply can't do it because they lack this kind of data. Exactly. Therefore, they go into the Met Office and say, would you be able to provide weather data on a very, very small grid with a very high spatial resolution, because we as an insurance company, we can run weather systems. That's actually your job. But the Met Office usually has a different task. They're meant to provide the forecast on a large level and large scale and right. not go microclimatic on a farmer's level. Yeah. So we somehow need to bridge that gap there, the self-understanding of the Met Office and what the insurance companies and the pharma community wants. And countries like Belgium where we are or Germany, presumably the, the meteorological office provides this kind of data to no, the industry or at least no, it's, it's available in other ways. It's <laughs> not the Met Office, but there are many, many parallel weather station networks the one being run by the National Met Office, one being run by chambers of agriculture, by farmers' cooperatives, because over here we have the luxury to have all these things in parallel. Yeah. Africa has neither. Right. They don't even have a decent weather station network for the forecast, let alone farmers' cooperatives, as there hardly are any farmers' cooperatives. Right. And that's why the international community thinks about stepping in and setting up these networks. But uh, so far, as I understand it, they've only stepped in with pilots, is that right? That is the major issue. Nobody has had the courage to say, let's do this on scale. Let's go national. Everybody puts a few stations here, a few stations there. And even a few successful examples like Kilimo Salama that was set up in Kenya are not being duplicated, hmm. which I don't understand why not. And well, let's talk about that. Why not? I mean, you, this is something you've been talking about. I know you were here last year. We discussed it. Yes. You've talked to the European Commission. You've talked to other aid and donor agencies. What are you hearing from them? What is the challenge of getting the donor community to step up and take a big bet on something like this, which seems like it's clear, there's obvious uh, need, it connects to the market. Why not? I think there are two reasons. One reason is they're looking for a driver. And in Kenya, we had the lucky situation that an international foundation said, we're going to drive that, and if the Met Office can't do it or don't have the financial means to do that, we'll do everything. We will install, we will maintain, we'll collect the data, we'll give it to the insurance company, and we add on services on top of that. So that was in Kenya, and we don't have that in most other countries. And the second problem is many donor organizations don't regard weather infrastructure as an infrastructure task the government should take care of. They look at this from a business perspective. What's the business model behind that? How right. can we sell that data? And if you're talking smallholder farmer with a little 0.2 hectare plot, the man doesn't have the money to pay for that data. So you have to catch 22. Yeah. And once you are in a pilot stage with five stations, you never come to critical mass to make this commercially viable for an insurance company. You need hundreds of thousands of subscribers who pay each a little to accumulate some decent revenue from that enterprise. With a little pilot, you don't get there. Yeah, so well, you do need the courage to go to scale. This is a challenge in many sectors within development, pilotitis, people call it. Uh, one pilot after the next and never the courage to go to scale. Yeah. I, I, I wish you well with this. Uh, it's an important Thank mission and thanks for bringing this message here to the European Development Day. It's been Days. a pleasure. Thanks a lot for the interview. Thank you. Thank you.